Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to work on the collection filter using Ajax. So let's see how we can do this. In the previous video, we learned how we can apply filters. You understood like how filters work in Shopify collection page. Everything in here was not an Ajax request. So in this video, we will uh, learn how we can use Ajax to update the collection page when the filters are applied. So if I come here, if I click on this black, it is going to show me only the product on the black without refreshing the page. If I, for example, take off this and it is going to take off that and it will refresh the page uh, with Ajax request. Now I have done it behind the scene. I'm going to revert all the code and we will start from the beginning. So you will learn how you can do this. Um, again, the source code is available on Kit GitHub. It is good that you practice it yourself. If you couldn't, you can just check out the code on GitHub. So let's come back to our code. The team watch is running and NPX mix watch is also running. These are all the changes. I'm going to revert all of them and I'm going to open the filters uh, which we are going to work on and also the collection grid, which is this. So filter is the main one that we are going to work. So if I come here now, if I refresh everything, now it is back to the original uh, changes except i have done some basic designs if you are watching previous video and this video i have done some basic designing in here that's why you see now if i am clicking on any of them it is not refreshing the page until i click this apply button so the apply button will submit the form and it is going to apply the filters the new collection page will load so let's see how it works behind the scene now i wanna uh, i wanna just go a step by step and show you how it works let's uh, inspect this form that we have here you see this form now if I select it you can see the whole uh, filters are inside this uh, form as soon as we click apply it is going to submit the form whereas the action for the form it doesn't have any action so action is where you send the data if it does not have any uh, any action it means it will send it to the same page that we have here and our collection all okay that is great uh, now uh, we also have multiple uh, submit buttons one submit button other submit button for example if i do not uh, bring if i bring a changes in here and I click on the submit in here it is it's still going to apply these changes because these submit buttons are all inside the same form if you have worked with the forum previously you know the submit button will work that way okay great now you understand how it works now let's see how we can use Ajax request to update our data. Here is the thing. We can watch for any changes on the checkbox. As soon as someone check or uncheck, let's send an Ajax request to the URL and then grab the data. To which URL? To this URL, but it should also apply the filters. So let's see how we can do it. And I will go back to my code editor in here let's wrap everything around this data to create the component for us and let's also create an object um what else we need inside this the only thing that that's very important is the loading so let's say loading is equal to false so if the loading is false nothing will show and the same thing that uh, we apply for the collection if you remember uh, this is the sort one we also uh, render this uh, loader also loader is a component that is displaying the loader icon so what we can do is we can just display it after this title it doesn't do anything it just display in here so if we change this loader to true it is going to add the loader to the page now let's refresh this and see how it goes and also I'm fixing my camera which is not working for some reason that's fine you don't have to see my face but yeah this is currently how it looks uh, now let's go back to our code let's find out the checkbox I'm going to again inspect this checkbox the way I do is I just copy the this classes which are very unique and come here this is where we have these values now this is the checkbox that we have if you want to trigger any changes, all you have to do is come here and, and write at change. For example, if I say at change loading is true, 
If someone change this, the loading will become true and it will show the loader for us. So if that is right, if I refresh it, click on this, it is displaying the loader for me. Okay, that's perfect. That this is what we want. But instead of doing this, we have to, um, what I call, we have to uh, send the request to the server and grab the data. So what we can do is we can either call a function in here or we can dispatch an event, then listen for that event. I think listening to an event is much uh, better because in the future, we can listen for that event on any other places also. If someone filter the collection page, do this. If we call a function, it just call the function and nothing else happen. So this is what we say. We just say dispatched, not dispatch, dispatch. And in here we say filter updated, something like this. Now, when we are dispatching this event, we can listen for the event at the top in here. So let's listen for that event. Uh, we can say filter updated dot window. Since the events are going to be filed on a window or variable, we are going to do this. Now in here, I can console.log and the event will fire properly. But we can put it inside this dollar sign next tick. If you are not familiar with the, this uh, next tick, um, just letting you next tick will uh, will wait for any other activities on the page to finish and then it will do. Like if you have any other event triggered, it will wait for that and then this one will run. Also, we have to take it out of this uh, object that we have in here. Just removing this, yeah. It should be outside because this quotation is started and ended here. Next tick, um, it is also part of AlpineJS and this uh, we can just run a self-executing function. Inside of this, we can do something. Let's say we should filter something. That is where it happens. For, uh, for now, if we say console.log filter updated, let's see if this is listening or not. Okay, now we are not uh, making the loader true. So if I go to the console, let's clear everything, click filter updated. Okay, that's great. If I uncheck this, again, it is going to run for the second time, which is great. This is what we want. Now in here, we have to serialize the form, grab the data and just send it to a URL. Now, the reason I show this step by step is because a lot of people do not understand how form is going to work, how you send the data. So here is the thing. How do I serialize the form? First of all, this is my form, right? Let's give it a, a unique identifier with X ref. I will call it a form or filter form, something like this. Now in here, I can access it using the refs on AlpineJS. So if I create a, let's say let form is equal to refs, in here you, I can pass the name. What was the name of it? It was filter form. If I come and bring console.log down here, as a second parameter, I'm going to pass the form. Let's see what the form is. It should grab this form, okay? I will refresh this. For now, we don't have any filter. Let's apply this filter and see. This is the form that we have. Now let's take this data from the form. This in stock data. This should be in term of JSON. Now here is the thing. In Shopify, uh, like in general, when you're submitting the form, there is two ways you can submit. Either you post it or you send a GET request, okay? As a basic, of course, there are different, like we have post, we have patch, we have delete. Those are the also possibilities. But for now, we have to send a GET request to a URL because if we send a post request to this URL with all the data, it is not going to accept it. So how can we uh, grab the this all of this information from this form? We can uh, change it to a JSON format, like a URL parameter, and then send it to um, this URL. So what I mean is if any changes happen in here, we're going to grab all those changes turn it to a um, URL parameter and then send the Ajax request. So let's use, let, let's just Google it. If I search for JavaScript um, 
form data to URL parameters. If I search for it, let's go to a stack overflow, for example. Okay, this example is a great example. I have already searched this, but yeah, I know this is working fine. So how it works, it's used this uh, class called new search param, and you can just pass the form data. This should be your form. It will uh, convert it to a string. And this is exactly what I want. I copy this, I'll come here. Now I'll show you how it works. Instead of this one, all I have to do is pass my form since we are selecting in here. Or you can directly pass your form in here and get rid of this. That's also another option. For now, if I paste it in here, now let's see what we have in the data. URL search param is going to convert this string to a search parameter or the URL parameter. Now if I come here, let's refresh it. Uh, let's click in this struct. You can see this is exactly the URL that we want. Filter updated. This, if we send this to the filter, it will add it to the filter URL in here. That is exactly what we want. So how do we send that to the request? The same way that we did for the filter, we say sort collection, we say this dot filter true. This is exactly what we want to do. And why not we just copy the code from here? For now, I will copy the code, this function. But in the future, we can refactor it, put it in one place. If we are using more than once, then it is not a good idea to repeat ourselves. But here's the thing. We send a fetch request to this URL instead of this sorting that we are putting in here. Uh, what should we put in here? Okay, what was it? Okay, it should be in a set of sort. Let me just close this. For now, we can plus it with the query string. And this is the query string that will be attached to the collection URL. It will go, everything will be fine in here, except if I remove this for now, let's see what Copilot is going to do for us. Copilot is saying, okay, this instead of um, sorting in here, all we have to do is add this uh, query string at the end. You know all of these are from pre previous video. What we do is we just uh, send an Ajax request to that URL, we grab the data, all the HTML, and we replace the existing one with that. This is basically what we do. If I save it for now, let's see if it works. Now, there are a few things we have to modify in here. First of all, we should not say this.loading because it is not inside the function. And the same thing in here. Those are the only two changes we need to bring. For now, let's come back here. As I said, if this is looking very messy to you, there are ways you can refactor it in AlpineJS. You can extract it into a separate JavaScript file and it works exactly the same way. We might do that in a future video, but I can't promise because these video series are taking too much time. For now, let's check it out. If I click on this, yes, it is sending us to this URL and we get the new product in here. To show you, if I say black, only this product has a variant of black. So if I click the black, only this product will show. You might also notice one thing. If I click on this, why it is half black? Uh, the reason for that is because if I open the filter, um, not the filter, the loader, the loader is absolute. Say so position is absolute, then that is what happens. So let's make it a fix. And we also take out all of this for now. Now let's refresh the page. We don't have any filters. Everything is fine. Now if I am at the bottom, let's click on red. It is taking the full page and it's giving us the product in here. One thing we are missing, where can we remove those filters at the top? We don't have it, right? Uh, unless we come here and uncheck it. But it is good to have those filters at the top. For example, if I come here, refresh it, these filters at the top should be always available in here. So how do we do this? Now, there are ways we can do it. Either we can, uh, if I come to the code, coming here, in here, what we do is, we only replace this part of our code. This part of our code is here. Uh, the collection create container. What we can do is we can also create another class for this part of our code and then replace that. But better than that, why not just replace the whole page with this? I just 
grab this i know it is the grid that container but it also contain everything we need so just paste it in here this is much easy now it will work the same way that we want now let's uh, remove this for now remove all of this okay we don't have any filter right everything is fresh in here when we click any stock it load the page and it replace everything in the page and we also can click in here you can see the black is added green the page is not going to refresh it is just taking the new data and displaying in here and we also can get rid of this console.log that we have in here this is basically that much simple to send an ajax request and grab the data and display it this one will update the url at the top if you have any error it will throw an error but there are more we can do for example uh, if I check this one, it is a pure link. When I click on this, it refresh the page. This is what you should do. Um, I'm not going to do this part because it is easy. Just send an Ajax request to the URL and grab the data displayed in here the same way. But uh, I'll just put it for you that way. I might do it on this um, behind the scene and you can check the source code on GitHub. But basically, this is how easily you can use Ajax request to apply filters and everything is looking nice and great i think so i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video